Welcoming guys to yet another World of Warcraft video today. We are going over the weekly WoW economy wrap up. Now, if you guys have not seen any of those or, or these videos before, uh, they're basically a WoWhead economy weekly wrap up post on WoWhead specifically. And it's put together by Samanan. If you guys do not know who he is, he's another WoW gold maker in the community. Little less active at the moment, but he is still um, putting these together for us every single week. And it's greatly appreciated, especially for everyone trying to follow like the news around what's happening in uh, the gold of what, the gold of Warcraft. No, the World of Warcraft gold making community side of things when it comes to World of Warcraft. But either way, um, this is number two hundred and nineteen. I know it's crazy how long this has been going for. But for the table of contents today, we have Progenitor, Essentia, and Flying. Obviously, that came out with the recent resets. Flying came out, and now we have some new numbers. Shadowlands, Market Trends, Looking Ahead for the Future, and then Gold Making Success Stories. And that is what we have today. So here, Progenitor, Essentia, and Flying. You can see this week saw the Unlocking of Flying, which is a massive boon for farmers and regular players alike. One of the key materials, which is still hard to get in large quantities, is Progenitor Essentia. The price has been steadily declining and has hit sub to 10,000 now on many realms. And this is something that we've been talking about here on the channel as well, and also on uh, on the Twitch channel as well. Um, the the price has been going all over the place, and it heavily depends on the server. There's a lot that are still you know 10 to 14k but it has definitely fallen a lot in value and as you guys can see right here is there's a little video one of my videos here uh that goes through what the new numbers are for progenitor essentia farming with flying so um if you guys have not watched this video you should but just to give you guys a tldr for this video specifically um, the amount of progenitor essentia that you can actually get with flying is not that much higher. We had a 3.06 an hour average for uh, for progenitor essentia flying or farming without flying, and that was on 17 hours. And now with flying, we've done close to the same amount, and it's uh, like 3.46. So, the, you know, the chance of getting four instead of three every hour is definitely higher. But to justify the overall quantity increases and the price decreases is not enough. Uh, but something that I, ha I say in this video as well is now with flying, a lot of people can actually go out here and do this farm without you know being annoyed or it being super hard it is a lot easier to do this farm with flying so we're, we're definitely seeing a lot more people out here which is why the quantity is rising amongst amongst other things obviously um and then uh there's a little post here about a guy on reddit that was talking about how much gold that's one of his friends was actually um uh, making on a specific server now this was before a lot of the price decreases but you can still make a lot of gold with gathering and um it's 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 still even even with the current numbers you can probably still expect 40 to 80k an hour uh doing this particular farm with 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 mining and herbalism and that's still very good for the average player if if, if you want to find something that you don't have to like fully understand or really get into so it is uh, still very good i would definitely say and then there is a uh, post over on Reddit, and that is basically Shadowlands market trends. And that uh, this particular thing is uh, him talking, this Clover North person is uh, going over a bunch of the different reasons as to why certain materials acted in the way that they did. Um, and you can, if you guys did not play uh, at the start of the expansion, then you might not be able to remember the whole Eternal Crystal bottleneck because very early on in the expansion, it was very hard to get Eternal Crystals. And the reason that this was very hard was because we could not craft epic um, epic items in the professions and getting them out in the world was also very hard. Most of the ones that people uh, found were something that people would equip. 
So the bottle knife for enchants was kind of crazy. The eternal crystals were selling for, you know, in the first week, maybe even second week, they were selling for thousands of gold. Like I remember selling selling eternal crystals for close to ten thousand, which is absolutely insanity compared to how low they are now. You know, most servers they have them for a hundred gold or even lower, right? So it's a very very big difference. But that that's. A post like this is good. It's good always to look back on what happened in an expansion because you can take certain things from what happened in an expansion and use it in future expansions. So kind of like as a learning point as to how you're going to approach new markets when we eventually get new content. And the new expansion here is... Uh, you know around the corner and we'll be talking around uh we'll be talking about that uh, a lot more on this channel when we get the announcement for it here in a month's time we'll definitely be talking and going into like uh thoughts and ideas of what we're actually going to do when the new expansion comes out but it's a very good post if you guys would like to to read in-depth conversations about what people put together here definitely do that um, he highlighted some of the like more popular comments on this Reddit post, but there's a lot that you can go into here. Um, especially, uh, you know, they're they're obviously going through most of the, like the high velocity markets, so the 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 herbs, the ores, uh, the enchanting materials, and then also eventually somebody is talking about qualified crystals as well, and then progenitor essentia. So something like this is very very good to go over. And then for looking ahead, Penguin has put together a video that goes over the Mage Tower again. Now, if you guys don't, if you guys weren't a part of it back in uh, December or whenever it was, uh, the Mage Tower was introduced as part of the Legion time walking thing. So basically, what that is is if you guys did not play in Legion, it's it's basically like hard challenges that you go through, kind of similar to Torghast now. Um, but you go through them and you get specific like cosmetic rewards and a lot of people really enjoy it and really have a lot of fun with it and want to get those cosmetic rewards. Now, since it is a uh, time walking related thing, there are certain pieces of gear that you can get from older expansion that will scale better to that specific time walking. So this video specifically goes over what could be a good idea to invest into or prepare for to make gold on people actually willing to spend a lot of gold when it comes to the Mage Tower. So if you guys are interested in making any any sort of gold when the Mage Tower event eventually comes around here in a little over a, a little under a month, it's uh the twelfth of April and the thirteenth of April, I believe. You know, NA and EU resets, of course. And uh, yeah, if you guys would want to look into that, definitely do that. Um, and also around that time is going to be a very, very popular time because uh, the new Hearthstone expansion comes out on April 12th, I'm pretty sure. And then as well as that, we'll also see, as you can see here, the next expansion release, and now, not release, but announcement uh, will come on April 19th. So we're definitely going to have a lot of hype in a, a little under a month and it's going to be great. Now... Other than that, if you're looking for like some inspiration, as as it says right here, some inspiration or some gold making ideas, there are some gold making su success stories here. And if we take the first one here, just to give you guys an idea, and then we can see from Doctor Flanagan here, I spent essentially every day farming everywhere, uh, rare and serve border since launch, and I hit revered yesterday. Since they have sold contract, uh, since then I've sold contracts, glyphs, and just surpassed one million gold with almost no competition. One other player also got revered and posted some contracts, but I came to the auction house all day, so the poor fellow never stood a chance. I've been in a gold making slump for a while, never really finding my market in Shadowlands, but these past twenty four hours really helped revive my inner goblin. Just wanted to share, and that's one of the things that you can do if you want to be first to market on something that's specifically reputation related. That is something that you can focus on, especially for new content and new, uh, eventually also new expansion so if you guys are interested in something like that you definitely should prepare yourself for something like that um and other than that it's obviously going into 262s and legendaries and this is basically just uh people you can see here uh elegy Le legacy Le legacy elegy legacy that's an interesting name 
Uh, I anticipated that a lot of people would want Legos and 262s as soon as they were available. So I'd stockpiled Progenitor Essentia from the auction house beforehand. What I did not expect was a spike in price for Progenitor Essentia on my server, up to 60k gold. So he probably played on a low pup or a medium pup, right? And most people don't like paying much more than 100k for their legendaries, so selling Legos and 262s turned profit negative when crafters got into an undercutting war just to move their product first. I ha I, I halted crafting, pulling my Legos off the market, sold all my raw progenitors and said that I had stockpiled for about double what I paid, and then a week later, mats calmed down, but the legendaries and 262s are still flying off the shelves for a much nicer, nicer profit. This is honestly the quickest I've ever made a million and it happened by lucking into a scarce mat price uh, uh, spike instead of the time and money I spent investing in Lego crafting. So something like this is now he understands what can happen in a market like that. And that comes to comes to show for a lot of specific like gold making markets, especially new ones. You have to learn how to, you know, move around and do all these things and invest into it. It just is based on experience most of the time, especially if you play on a very specific server with very specific markets compared to what you might see your 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 random gold maker talk about. Right. And that is definitely very important. But that is basically going to be uh, what we have on the Wowhead economy weekly wrap up this is a very good post i appreciate seminan for uh you know featuring me here uh on the post itself if you guys are interested this post will be down below in the comments and it will also be in the description so you can find it anywhere if you watched all the way till this point in the video i want you guys to type into the comment comments right now frog if I see you type frog in the comments, I know that you've watched for a long time and I greatly appreciate it. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching this entire video. If you haven't yet, make sure you like the video and also subscribe to the channel with all the notifications on. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. So until the next one. See you guys.